Hey, you can't give a million dollars worth of game sounding as stupid as you sound. Me and Joe Buddies talk two different languages. I talk the language. When I was rapping, all you was tuck, tuck your tails in, in between your legs. All of you. With all the design shit on, all the big sneaks trying to act like you a cool ass old head, you're not. You out there creating your fucking ass list. When it comes to Joe Budden and Gilly the Kid, these two are actually more alike than they are different. They both had subpar rap careers, they both have hot-headed personalities, and they're both extremely competitive people. However, the relationship between these two has definitely been rocky, and recently things have heated up again, so I decided to break down the beef for you guys. By the way, hit the like button, drop a comment, because these videos do take me a while to create. So the whole thing kicks off in 2019 with Sue Surf. At no point ever in the history of life were you ever a better rapper than Joe Button. And you one of the best rappers. And you one of the best rappers you I crazy know. Crazy nigga. And you one of, and you one of the best rappers I know. You and never could ever crazy nigga. Joe you must be rooting for Jersey or something. Hell no. No fuck are you me and Joe Buttons talk two different languages. I talk the language. I know, I'm talking about a pen. You cannot rap better than that man. Now at the end of the day, this is hip hop. Every rapper should feel like they're the best. So Joe just responds with a simple tweet. But just one week later, we find out that Gilliam Wallow signed a $3 million deal with Dave Portno of Barstool Sports. And it turned out to be a very good deal for everybody involved, except for their former producer, Dev Nasty. Weird Dev, hey, weird Dev. Do y'all know Dev tried to sue me and Walla? Dev career has died. Rest in peace to Devin Wade's career. Now, up to this point, Dev was actually very quiet and very respectful about this breakup. He really didn't talk about it too much. But after Gilly's rant, he decided to expose his barstool contract. What we're going to do right now is I'm just going to show y'all the contract. And I got receipts on everything I talk about. So in a sense, they're giving me $4,500 for 48 episodes, which brings it to like 90 something bucks per episode. So that's why I'm like, uh, nah, man, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not running with that. And just a few weeks later, Joe and Gilly meet on Instagram live and they have a very friendly conversation. Yo, how y'all liking it over at Barstool, man? And hey, we can't complain, man. You know what I mean? It's work, bro. You know how it is. But anyway, I love Dave. Y'all gotta come up. Y'all gotta come up to New York when we could when we could fuck come around. On, man. Man. Just let us know we gonna come up there and we gonna break the motherfucking internet one time. Man. man, listen, send my send my love to Wallow, man. I love you, oh, niggas. Bro. Now here's when things go left because just one month after that friendly conversation, Joe decides to bring up Gilly's podcast breakup with Rory and Maul. Uh, Gilly and Wallow hit podcast million dollars worth of game. They were doing however many episodes they did, and they did this alongside a gentleman named Dev. Dev yeah. is not really a part, he's not a part of their core and friendship group, mm -hmm. but he did add something to the show. So when his barstool money came, Dev was asking for 15% of his barstool money, to which mm -hmm. Gilly said, man, if you don't get the fuck out of my face, no. So before mm -hmm. I ask you gentlemen where y'all fall on this, I just want to take this time to tell all podcasters out there, old, new, new, old, just have your understanding. I won't call it have your business together. Have your understanding in order. <laughs> have your people understanding mm -hmm. in order. Well, you before, and your people before, should... Before business, you should Before have. it gets booming. <laughs> now, the funny thing about that clip is, number one, it aged like milk for Joe Budden. It was just one year later that he had his own podcast breakup with Rory Amal. And honestly, I think he was really just testing them with this topic. He wanted to discuss this with them because of his own circumstance. However, that didn't matter because Gilly was pissed off. He didn't want anybody discussing his business, and he went in on Joe. Why is y'all niggas talking about us on y'all podcast? We don't talk about other podcasts on our podcast. Must be dead Fred over that motherfucker, huh? Stop speaking on business that you niggas don't have no fucking clue what y'all talking about. Because I will catch you niggas in traffic and then, uh, then, then what's gonna happen? Ransom pulled up to Joe Button's crib, knocked on the door. His uncle came to the door. He said, is Joe Button's here? He said, no, Joe ain't here. The nigga slapped your uncle, man. How you let your uncle get slapped and ain't nothing happen? Nigga, the first episode we ever put out was number two in the country behind Joe Rogan, not Joe Buttons. Don't ever get us fucked up. So y'all keep talking for the college kids and y'all keep talking for, for the suburbians. We the streets, nigga. 
We come from a whole different cloth than y'all niggas. Y'all niggas is Rayon. We Egyptian cotton, nigga. Now, at this point, Joe Budden takes the high road. He decides to stay quiet. Well, for a few months, and then Gilly says this. You always giving up game. Why you don't get no game on Black Lives Matter? Because I don't get into that shit, nigga. All lives matter, nigga. I don't give a fuck if you white, black, blue, purple, brown, tangerine. Nigga, all lives matter. Y'all want a nigga to go out there head first, tell these motherfucking white people black lives matter. But my motherfucking black life didn't matter to the nigga that tried to execute me. To the nigga that shot me in my motherfucking wrist, stomach, and my foot. The nigga that tried to have my mama singing it so hard to say goodbye. My black life didn't matter to that nigga. All the niggas I knew been shot by niggas. Now, Gilly gets a lot of heat from that video. He gets a lot of backlash, the blogs pick it up, everybody's talking about it. So eventually, he posts a response video. Oh, oh, y'all tried to post something that I said four years ago, but tried to act like it was in today's climate. Let me just say this, right? When I said that, white people wasn't even saying that at that time, for number one. All right, so let me just start this video by saying, shout out the Black Lives Matter movement, right? I support y'all. I support everybody that's on ground zero. Joe Budden decides to capitalize on this moment. He swoops in like a vulture and just goes in for the kill. Yeah, I'm not caping for this nigga, man. This nigga says and no, does no, no, a lot not, of stupid, not, I don't think and goofy, caping. Yeah, nobody, goofball it's not caping shit. shit. And ever since he got that bar stew deal, it's amplified. I heard enough last week when David Portnoy said that Gilly thinks that I can say nigga. Anybody who replies to Black Lives Matter with the harm that blacks do to each other, you're not somebody that I'm gonna have this conversation with again, and I'm gonna question your train of thought. I'm gonna question your uh, cognitive skills. You clearly do not comprehend the magnitude of the conversation we're having. Oh. Hey, you can't give a million dollars worth of game sounding as stupid as you sound. But of course, Gilly stepped right up to the plate, not ducking any smoke whatsoever, comes through with the full clip, ready to cook. Joe Butthead, AKA Joe Buttons. He called me a, a, a doofus. Was that because I, I brought up the story about your peoples getting slapped? See, I really know what this really about. You know shit start from the ground up, but the niggas on the ground level don't fuck with you. They fuck with me. That's what's really hurting your feelings. Raekwon and his man walked in. I seen the tape. Now you keep talking shit, nigga. In the next episode, I'm putting it the fuck out. A nigga punched you in your fucking face. You fell on the floor and screamed, My eye! My eye! You sat there screaming about your fucking eye. Then that nigga's homie picked you up and sat you on the couch while you were still screaming, My eye! My eye! My eye! Now, in my opinion, guys, this this response from Gilly is pretty weak. I mean, who doesn't know about Joe Budden and Ransom? Who doesn't know about Joe Budden and Raekwon? Joe Budden's entire career has been an open book, so none of this is really new information for anybody who's been tapped in at all. All this shit has been heavily publicized. But either way, in the true spirit of million dollars worth of game, Gilly decides to monetize this moment with some Joe Budden t-shirts. I'm not your average Joe. <laughs> now, from here, things go fairly quiet for a couple of months until Gilly makes an appearance on Drink Champs. What, what, what really got me mad is that it's not even that you talking about me and my business is that you had no facts. No facts. Like, nothing you said was remotely true. Well, they, they did the same thing with us. They, 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 they disputed our numbers at CBS. Oh, so that's just a part of the whole I program they got I believe it is, I believe it is. I think that he wants to spar with you, though. Yeah, like, we can put the gloves on but, tomorrow. But that's also, that's also a sign of respect. <laughs> but one it's thing also, about him, you, 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 hold on, why it's also a sign of respect. Look what you just, you <laughs> And at this point, Gilly continues to clown Joe Budden online by posting a video of himself dancing to pump it up. Gilly continues to clown Joe Budden by leaving him out of his top five hip hop podcaster list. What's the top five po hip hop podcasts? Let's get it. Number one is is Million Dollars Worth of Game. 
Number two is uh, drink, drink champs. champs is heavy in here. Drink champ, no jumpers. Oh, I'm throwing big facts in there. Big facts. Oh, big, big facts. facts is major. And we want to put you five. That's I thought I'm... Joe was the number one podcast. Shit, like you in, got in me hip hop, hip hop, hip hop. How? Fuck, we don't exist. Yeah, now nah, I we listen. know who run this shit. The conversation then goes full circle to talk about who's a better rapper. You put me and Joe in a fucking rap battle, I sweep Joe fucking buttons under a fucking rug. Fuck are you talking about? Stop it. Yeah. You don't believe that. I got Joe winning. Nigga, do you believe that? I believe that. You Joe's believe Joe Buttons can out rap me? Yeah. Come on, man. You got you got life fucked Joe up. Joe would smoke the shit out of me. You a that Jersey, one song, nigga. That me and Joe Buttons could do a rap battle, right? And they can give me, they can give me a, a heavy ticket, and they can give him a heavy ticket. And if I don't win, I give him half of my fucking ticket. Gilly, I think this is a like a joke. Nah, Gilly, can I rap. think this is a troll. When I was rapping, all you niggas was tucked, tucked your tails in, in between your legs, all of you. Yeah. My career, call it a failure, but boy did he rap. But I don't think there's a rapper that He's podcast nice. that could tie my shoes. Not one of them, Gilly. I will do a versus with you, I will. Neither one of us are big enough to ever make it to the versus stage, but I'm cool with that. <laughs> I'll do a versus with you if you want. I was gonna make Y'all can get the spot, we, we can do it in Philly. <laughs> that was gonna be my sleep. We can do it wherever you feel most comfortable at. I'm down. That's my message to Gilly. No, no, Smack, we gonna do the battle, the, the real battle. battle. I, I could beat oh. the shit out of Joe Buds in the no, battle. No, now at this point, rumors start circulating. Apparently, Gillian Wallow signed a $100 million deal with Barstool Sports. Now, keep in mind that none of this has been substantiated. Nobody truly knows the actual details of their contract, but it's safe to say that these guys definitely got a bag. And just shortly after this deal is announced, Gilly takes some not so subliminal shots at Joe Budden. All you old heads that's running around trying to live y'all second fucking childhood because you finally came up on some fucking money at 41 years old, 43 and a half. Now you running around with all the designer shit on, all the big ass sneaks, trying to act like you a cool ass old head. You're not. You're corny, nigga. You always been corny. Ain't nothing gonna change that. You a CMF for life, a corny motherfucker. And you know who know that you're corny? All the motherfuckers that knew you before you was 41 and a half years old and finally got your fucking life together and got some money. Now you run around here thinking you got a nice car, you got the big ass Balenciagas on that you ain't supposed to be or having on. You too old for that shit. I'm just telling you, you're still fucking corny, all right? And you got the big ass teeth in your mouth. That shit don't mean nothing. You're corny. And of course, in true Joe Budden fashion, if you don't mention his name directly, he likes to play the part that it can't be about him. Which, in hindsight, is a completely different formula than what Joe would use in his rap career, where if there was maybe even a small possibility that someone dissed him very subliminally, he would come for their neck with like 500 bars, so it's an interesting switch up from his old format. Anyways, the next time Joe talks about Gilly is on Drink Champs. Million dollars worth of game or Rap Radar? I'm gonna say Rap Radar because they were first. Okay. You, had, you, don't, you, don't, you don't got beef with Gilly and Wilder. Because mm. in the verses, who would win? You or Gilly? I would win the verses. Uh -oh. You would win it? <laughs> Against Gilly? Are you playing with me? I'm not playing with you. <laughs> and now we're at the part in the story where Charlemagne makes his infamous appearance on Million Dollars Worth of Game. Who was a better rapper, Joe Buns or Gilly? This shit, that's easy. Yeah. No, no. Easy. No. Ha, 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 go ahead. Who, who? Joe. Thank you. That's all I see. <laughs> Let's get on stage right now. I bet my light to a suitcase full of shit, I get Joe Buttons out of here in the first two rounds. On the battle? Just like I did Let's every nigga. Just, just like I did every nigga from New York. I got every nigga Sight, out of here. Nigga. Sources. I don't believe you. I got every nigga that I ever went up against out of this motherfucker. Now from here, Gilly takes more subliminal shots at Joe by making reference to Complex's top hip hop podcaster list, where Joe was listed as number one. I don't give a fuck about no list, Envy. You hear me? Don't compare us to nobody that ain't stopping in the middle of their motherfucking podcast and saying, this episode is brought to you by <laughs> Omega Accountant Solutions. Yeah. This episode <laughs> of Million Dollars Worth of Game <laughs> is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, wait, nigga. Man. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you oh, by man. Manscaped. <laughs> Hold on. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Roman Swipes. 
Hold on, you want us to keep going? Cause I can say 18 more of them motherfuckers. Talk that talk. So when you niggas out there creating your funky ass list, you leave us off it, nigga, unless you talk about the paid list, nigga. Oh, man. And we could do a paperwork party, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're not familiar with Joel Budden, he doesn't run ads on his podcast. He feels like it takes away from the podcast. And I actually agree with him on that front. Gilly's argument here is actually very weak again, because realistically, if Joe wanted to have these ads on his podcast, he could seriously have as many as he wanted. Even myself as a very small YouTuber, I get offers every single day from random companies wanting me to shill their shit. So I can only imagine just how many bags Joe has turned down over the years. If he wanted to have 18 ads on his podcast, he definitely would. It's not really a flex. He's clearly on a whole other mission right now outside of what these other guys are doing. And now that pretty much brings us up to date with where their beef is at today. Now, Joe did recently have a Patreon episode where he did mention them again. I'll leave a link to that in the comments section if you want to check it out. And lastly, I really need to give my buddy Danny from The Stop a huge shout out. If there's anybody who's killing it in the Joe Budden podcast space, is this guy. And in fact, if you're looking for podcast news uh, in general from someone with insightful commentary and dope content, Danny's your man. And Joe, by the way, if you're watching this by some fucking chance you see this, you better be giving that man Danny something by now. Like, that man better have a lifetime subscription for the Patreon. I mean, he got me to sign up, so I'm sure he got hundreds of other people to sign up. Throw this guy a merch bag, man. Give this guy a check acknowledge them anyways guys that is it for the video thanks so much for watching please subscribe and stay tuned until next time